Hello, this video is about numerical dispersion of advection schemes. That is, the speed of waves advected by advection schemes in comparison to the correct speed. Errors in the speed at which waves are advected leads to dispersion errors and oscillations in solutions. For example, like this video here, the, the true solution is the black line being advected to the right and a numerical scheme is, is this blue line. There are dispersion errors generating these oscillations. You can follow this video with a printed copy of the notes and pause the video to fill in the gaps. You can also check your work with the lecturer version of the notes. First, we will consider the phase speed of the continuous linear advection equation. So we know the one-dimensional linear advection equation uh, rate of change of phi with time plus the velocity times the rate of change of phi with space is equal to zero. We know its analytical solution. You can uh, pause, pause the video, uh, fill this in, look it up if you need to. So the analytical solution is the, um, the, the initial profile but moved around the domain at distance ut. Under the action of linear advection, Waves propagate with speed u. We know this. So this means linear advection is non-dispersive. The velocity, the speed of the waves u, does not depend on the wave number k. Uh, another thing we know, we're going to put all these facts together at the end. If we multiply a single Fourier mode by e to the i k x, if we rather, if we multiply a single Fourier mode, uh, Fourier mode is e to the i k x. We multiply it by e to the minus i k u delta t, um, then that mode will move a distance around the x-axis. What distance will it move? This is your initial profile, so just consider the real part of it. Uh, you multiply it by, by this number, um, that initial wave will move a distance around the x-axis. It will move a distance u delta t around the x-axis. We know the amplification factor for the exact linear advection, exact linear advection, which we've um, done early in this course. You can look that up or remember it and fill it in. It is e to the minus i k u delta t. That was this number here. So we're going to put these facts together. If a numerical method has amplification factor r e to the i minus i theta, so this is r is going to be the magnitude, and theta is the argument of this amplification factor. If it's got that amplification factor for wave number k, then the phase speed of the numerical wa the numerical waves with name wave number k will be. You can try to work it out. Pause the video. See if you can work it out. Will be theta divided by k delta t. So we know that um, uh, if you multiply the wave by this value, um, it will move a distance u delta t and the phase speed is u. So if you multiply it by theta, then the distance moved is going to be u divided by k delta t. So, and if, this, if, we, ca if we can calculate this um, phase speed of the numerical waves, if it's dependent on k, we'll, we'll, be, it'll be, we'll get numerical dispersion. It shouldn't depend on k, but it will for a numerical method. So let's have a look at the phase speed and dispersion errors of the centred in time, centred in space advection scheme. We'll start from the amplification factor for CTCS. Um, you can work this out or look it up in the notes. It is, uh, pause the video, uh, this is the amplification factor for CTCS, where C is the current number. Again, you can fill this in, pause the video to fill this in before continuing. U delta T over delta X. Um, Therefore, knowing both of these, and knowing what we found out on the previous slide, we can work out the phase speed of the numerical waves relative to the analytical waves. So un is the speed of the numerical waves divided by the speed of the analytical waves. So pause the video, um, substitute, find the argument of uh, this complex number and substitute it into here and divide by u, and you will get this value here. There's an inverse tan there because you're finding an angle from a, a real and imaginary part. This can be simplified by substituting in, instead of here u delta t, you can put the current number multiplied by delta x. And then you can also simplify by saying that 
we can define uh, angle alpha such that sine of alpha equals C sine k delta x. And there's that C sine k delta x. So that simplifies quite a lot. You can pause the video and try that simplification and you will get just uh, plus or minus alpha divided by C k delta x. So this um, numerical phase speed is dependent on k, so these there will be dispersion errors with CTCS. Uh, another thing to notice is there are, there are two possible phase speeds for each mode. Um, so two possible solutions. Both of these phase speeds can be plotted against k delta x in order to find how waves propagate when infected by CTCS. A plot of uh, the numerical phase speed against k delta x, or similarly a plot of the um, angular frequency against k, is called a dispersion relation. And uh, we can plot the dispersion relation for CTCS for a current number of 0.4. And it looks like this. This is here the phase speed over by k delta x. So what does this dispersion relation tell us about CTCS? Um, so this is what the phase speed should be, and now this is the, this is the dispersion relation plotting omega against k delta x. So here, um, this is what it should be with a linear relationship between omega and k, because u velocity doesn't depend on k. This is now the numerical one. Uh, have a think about what this dispersion relation tells us about CTCS and then compare your answers with, um, pause the video, compare your answers with this list here. It tells us there are two possible solutions. Um, the physical mode, which has uh, the phase speed or the angular frequency greater than zero, and the computational mode, which is um, going in the wrong direction. So that's the computational mode propagates in the wrong direction. Um, all waves are propagating too slowly. This is the this is the right frequency, and they're all too slow. Uh, another thing, a good thing you can see from this is the physical mode. If you have small k delta x, so small k delta x means um, either small k or small k de small delta x. Um, this means that the waves are well resolved. These waves propagate at the correct speed. So this is this is a good thing. If we have enough resolution, we're going to the infection scheme is going to be modelled accurately. Um, so this is why it's called a physical mode because if it's well resolved, it's doing the right thing. Uh, grid scale waves, if k delta x equals pi, if you could do a plot of a wave, you'll see that um, and compare that with the grid resolution delta x. Um, you can see that a grid scale wave that uh, shortest wavelength you can re represent has k delta x equals pi. These don't propagate at all. So if you have a grid scale oscillation, it will stay stationary. It won't be advected. So here's an exercise based on what you've learned about dispersion errors. Um, it's about what a dispersion relation can tell us about the behaviour of a numerical method. So I'm going to show you some results of some linear advection um, using two finite volume methods solving the linear advection scheme. So this is the equation for the generic finite volume method for linear advection in one dimensional uh, for a uniform grid. So the rate of change with phi, phi with delta t equals a minus the, wind sp the speed multiplied by the change in phi with x. This is a generic finite volume method, so we haven't defined haven't said how we define phi j plus a half and phi j minus a half. Phi is defined at positions j, um, and the specific finite volume method is, de is, is defined, you say how phi j plus a half and phi j minus a half are defined relative to phi j. So the two finite volume methods we're looking at is the lax wendroff method, which is defined like this, with phi j plus a half equal to this expression. And the warming and beam method has phi j plus a half defined with this expression. This is advection of a top hat profile, advecting to the right using current number of 0.2 and 100 points. So we can see them both moving to the right. Uh, we can see both of them have got dispersion errors. The, the square wave is changing shape. 
They're both generating oscillations, but they're generating them in different places. This one is, uh, the oscillations are ahead of the discontinuity, and this one, the oscillations are behind the discontinuity. I'll wait until that gets back to the beginning. Where it's vectored all the way around, um, where the... Um, You'll still be able to see a lot of dispersion errors after it's got all the way around. It'll have changed shape quite a lot. And here are the dispersion relations for the two schemes, except I haven't told you which scheme is which. Um, so this is a, of the angular frequency versus k delta x. Um, so which, which scheme is which and why? Um, have a think about that and have a, write down some reasons and then you can compare your answer with the uh, lecturer version of the notes online. Thank you very much for your attention.